Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to be coding the timer app. So you have two options. You can either one, stay in this video with me and we'll code each section, or you could just scroll down and you'll see each challenge that we're going to do in this video, followed by what you need to do, a hint in case you need any help, and the answer in case you just want to see what the answer is. Up to you, but we'll be starting off here. Now the number one thing that you should know about this app and building any other app is you should do just one step at a time. That way you could figure out what went wrong. Because if you coded 10 things and then your app isn't working, you have to figure out where in those past 10 steps did you make a mistake? Where if you instead did like three things and then you tried it out and realized it didn't work, you have way fewer options to narrow down where something went wrong. So just keep that in mind as you're coding. So the first thing that we need to code is we need to change the text input we need to take what's in there, we need to put it in the label, and then we need to make the text input disappear and have the label up here. And then we want to have the timer component start, and that'll be the next challenge to get the timer to go down. If we have our app here, the number one thing that we need to start thinking about is what's going to start this whole entire chain of events. And if we were the user and we had the app in our hand, I would put in maybe five seconds, I'd hit start and then it would start counting down. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, when the start button is clicked, that's when we want everything to happen. So let's go ahead and start coding that. So I'm gonna go over here to the start timer button, and I'm gonna say, hey, when the start timer button is clicked, then what do I wanna do? Well, first, I wanna grab what's in that text input, and I wanna put it in the label. Then I wanna hide the text input and then show the label. So let's do that. So I'm gonna say, all right, we're gonna set that label to whatever was in the text input. So I'm gonna say, hey, this text label here, we're gonna grab, we're gonna set its text to whatever was in the text input. So we can grab whatever text was in the text input. Great, now we need to hide our text input and show our label. So if I go to the text input and I scroll to the bottom, there's a visibility property and we could go ahead and set its visibility to false. Then what we need to do is say, hey, for our label, we need to set up that visibility to true. So I can just copy and paste this, put it in here and change using the drop down menu, the component to be the label and make the visibility using the drop down menu true. Great. So now I've got the label grabbing the text from the, the text input. I've got the text input hiding, the label showing, and now all I need to do is start the timer. So all I gotta do is go to the timer and say, hey, start. Now let's test this before we go on to the next challenge. I'm just gonna go to live test here, and I'm gonna type in three and hit start. And there we go. It grabbed what was in the text input, it put it in the label, and uh, the timer's running in the background, but nothing's happening because we didn't tell the app what to do. And that's gonna be our next challenge. We're gonna go ahead and make the label decrease. So we need the label to change by one every second or every time the timer fires. We need the label to change by one. So let's say the label starts out with five. We need the label to subtract by one and become four. And then we need to subtract one to the label again and three, and then subtract one from the label again and two. So that's what we're gonna try to do here. So if I go over to Thunkable, I can start to think about, well, what's gonna cause this event? Well, the last thing we left on was the timer starts. And what happens when the timer starts is this event goes off, right? And this event is when the timer's firing every second. So what do we wanna do every second? Well, we want the label here. We want this label to change subtracting one, right? So we know we wanna do something to the label. So I'm gonna grab the label text. And we know we want to subtract one. So I'm going to grab the subtraction block. And now that we have it subtracting one, we have to think, what is it subtracting one from? Because if I leave it like this, the label will just say zero the entire time because one minus one is zero. So I don't want it to be one minus one the other time. I want, to, I want it to subtract by whatever is in the label. So I could do that. I can go ahead and say, hey, whatever's in the label, subtract one from it. And then whatever's in the label, subtract one from it. Whatever's in the label, subtract one from it. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna go ahead and put in five seconds here. And it goes to four, yay! It looks like it's working so far, not too bad, except 
we're going into the negatives now. Why? Well, we also need to tell it, hey, you know, if we get to zero, then you know we have a lot of other things to do. We got to make the alarm go off. We got to, to go to the other screen. So let's go on to the next challenge. So for challenge three, what we want to do is stop the label from counting down if the label says zero, right? So we want this timer to stop when the label gets to zero. So to do this, there's a lot of different ways because there is a lot of logical statements that could work to make this happen, right? So if you come up with a different way than I do, that is totally okay. The way I'm gonna think about it is, I want it to subtract one as long as we're not at zero. So as long as that label is greater than zero, I want it to subtract one. If it's less or equal to zero, I want it to go somewhere else. I want it to do something else. So let's start off with that part. I want to say, okay, if the label text is greater than zero. So I can go to logic and grab a get greater than. So I can say, hey, if the label text is greater than zero, so I can go to math and grab a zero block, then I want it to subtract by one. And that makes sense, right? As long as it's any number that's not zero, that's above zero, I want it to subtract by one. The second it goes to zero or below, then I want it to do something else. So else, so I'm just gonna grab the mutator tool and add an else statement here. If else, well, what do I want it to do? Well, I want that alarm to go off, so I can just go to sound and make it play. And just make sure that you already set up your sound component to the alarm source. So I'm gonna make it play. And then after I make it play, I need it to go to the next screen. So the next screen is gonna be under control. You can grab the navigate to screen two. Right. The other thing I need to do is I need to stop the timer, right? Or if not, it'll keep subtracting, or if not, it'll keep trying to do this timer thing. So I need to go to the timer and set it to stop. Great, let's see what this does. So if I go in here and I type in five, It'll go four, three, two, one. And right now I can't stop that. I can't get the timer to stop. You just hit refresh and it'll refresh the page. And it'll make the timer stop. So now we need to get that timer to stop because we already completed this challenge. So for the next challenge, what we need to do is we need to switch. We need to use the switch to turn off the timer. Right? And then we need to navigate to back to screen one. And since the user flipped the switch, we want to make sure the switch always starts out in true. So let's do that. If we go to Thunkable, we can go to screen two blocks here. And if you forgot what the event is, always look at the designer and you could try to figure out what would the user do here? Well, the user would just flip the switch. So our event that we're looking for is when the switch switch value is changed. So I can go over here to switch and I can say, hey, on the switch value change, what do I want to do? Well, first I got to make sure, did they go to false, right? So if the value is false, so I can go, if the new value is equal to false, so I'm going to throw an equal sign in there first and go back to logic to grab another false. Okay, so if this new value is false, what do I need to do? Well, one, let's turn off that racket. Let's get rid of that sound. So I can go over here to the sound component and I can set it to stop. The next thing I can do is say, all right, go back to screen one. So I can just go to the control and I can grab navigate to screen one. The last thing that I need to do is say, hey, set this switch back to true so that the next time somebody runs this app, it'll always be in true. So I can go to the switch here and I can say, hey, let's set the switch's value to true. Let's see if this works. So I'm gonna put, oh, it starts out in the stop area. I can go ahead and flip it to see if it worked there. It looks like it worked there. Three, two, one. Flip the switch and it stopped the timer. So, so far, so good. There's only one challenge left. And it's not that important, but it's a pretty important challenge. We need to set up the cancel button so the person can cancel the timer in case they don't want the timer to go anymore. So here is our screen, right? And there's this cancel button here. And we want it so that when they click the cancel button, 
everything stops and the text input shows up again, the label disappears and they can edit the text again. So let's do that. So when the cancel button is clicked, that's always where we start the event. So when the cancel button is clicked, we're gonna say, all right, let's go ahead and first let's stop the timer. So I already see the block right here, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So we're gonna stop the timer. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set the label or make the label disappear and the text input up here. We already have those blocks right here, so I'm just gonna copy them. So we're gonna make the text input, set the visible to true so that they can change the time if they want. And we're gonna set the label to false. Let's go ahead and see if this works. So if I type in five, I hit start and I can hit cancel and it should bring back the text input and set the label to false. Nice. So that's it for this lesson, but in the next lesson, we've got a really great new feature. That feature is to add seconds and minutes in the timer so that the user can put in minutes and seconds together. The app would add them together and start counting down from there. I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll tackle that issue.